Malik sucks. So I spent the last few streams on Twitch writing my own custom heap allocator in C. Is it faster? No. Is it more efficient? Ye no. But it's mine. I learned a lot in the process and that's all that matters. Sit down, buckle up. Here we go. After realizing one day that the M in Malik stands for mid, I decided to make my own memory allocator. Actually, I just wanted to do this to figure out how the heap works, but that's not nearly as memeable. To make a heap, you need memory, so I had to get memory from somewhere. If only the kernel exposed a system call, where I could map in additional memory to my process. A function where I could add a memory map. It could even call it memory map. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. My map is a system call where you can just ask the kernel for more memory. And that memory is gonna be where our heap goes. We sprinkle in a few spicy parameters, call mmap, and get a page-aligned pointer back from the kernel. But what do we do with this memory? My heap API was simple. I only exposed two functions, heap alloc and heap free. Seems simple enough, right? Nope. Heap alloc would take the number of bytes the user wanted to allocate, and heap free would give them back to the heap. Before we can use heap alloc, though, I needed to initialize the heap. I created two structures, heap metadata and chunk metadata. The heap metadata contained several crucial pieces of information about the heap, like how much memory was available. Next, we sliced the heap up into pieces called chunks. A chunk is just a region of memory and the associated metadata about that chunk. Chunk metadata will track how big the chunk is and if it's currently in use. Also, if it's free, it'll act like a node in a linked list of other freed chunks. With the heap structures in place and the heap init function complete, we could begin to write the first part of the user API, heap alloc. When a user called heap alloc, we first had to check to see if the heap even had enough memory to support the request. If they ask for more memory than the heap size, too bad, so sad, get the fuck out of here! Next, we'd give them the first available chunk, which is just the head of the heap's list of free chunks, better known as the free list. Problem. If the user only asked for 32 bytes, we couldn't just give them the entire 40, 96 byte region we allocated, right? Right? Why? I, I don't know, I read it somewhere on Stack Overflow that that's bad. Anyway, to fix this, instead of just giving them the chunk in its current state, we could truncate the chunk to make it smaller and shorten it to the actual required length aligned to 16 bytes. After we truncate the chunk, we look ahead that many bytes for where the next chunk would go, construct a chunk there, and then make that the head of the heap's free list. Easy peasy. Now we can run some tests and see that when we allocate pieces of memory, we're getting small chunks instead of big chunks. But how do we give them back? Like any good C programmer, we don't. No, just kidding. I wrote the heap free function to only require a pointer to an allocated chunk as input. The heap free function was pretty simple. All it would do is mark the chunk as no longer in use and then add it to the free list. And this brings us to probably the biggest problem in my current heap implementation, Flagment defragmentation, uh, yeah. In theory, at this point, I could have just stopped. I didn't need to go any further. My heap was quote unquote done. Was it fast? Kinda. Did it work? Kinda. But it suffered from a fundamental flaw. Pretend for a second that a user allocated exclusively 32 byte fragments, and pretend for a second that they freed them all too. Yeah, I know, what a concept. If they did this, they could in theory create a free list that uses all the memory of the heap and contains exclusively 32 byte chunks. What happens if, after all of this, they want to allocate a 64 byte chunk? They can't. The memory in the heap has been completely fragmented into unusable 32-byte pieces. The solution? Preev size. We needed to add a little spice to our free function. Every time we freed a chunk, we would not only mark the chunk as not in use, we would also look behind that chunk to the previous chunk. By adding preev size to the heap chunk metadata, we could look into the previous chunk and see if that chunk was also free. And if that chunk was also free, we would cool, co co coalesce, there we go, coalescing the chunks turns our two adjacent freed chunks into one large free chunk that the heap allocator can now take control of. Sick. After running some tests, I confirmed that this functionality worked, the heap could not be completely fragmented, and I was feeling good about the heap that I wrote. 
Now, I made some fundamental assumptions about this heap that you may disagree with. I didn't account for a user overwriting heap metadata with malicious memory operations. I did not account for a user freeing an arbitrary pointer and potentially adding arbitrary locations to my free list. But I learned something, and I hope you did too. Anyway, guys, this is my last video until 2024. I will see you next year. It's been a good year. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Like and subscribe. Hee hee.